Good evening and welcome to Traders Group. This evening I wish to take a close examination of the obviously the S&P 500 and just get a sense of uh, the possibilities that have occurred in the past few months, especially since the April low and maybe more importantly since the um, just recently. Um, in terms of investment, I have urged and conjured and pushed people to be exposed to this market even though the market has been quite negative from a from a media point of view and uh, if you have listened to the media you've missed out on some massive gains in the past six months even in the past six weeks as an example how has my portfolio or one of my portfolios gone this is a portfolio that is a mirror of uh, of the Momentum Investing course. So just in the past six weeks, how have I performed since the beginning of the financial year? And uh, when that picture pops up on screen, the answer is 6.68% with a significant outperformance against the benchmark, the green line being XJO. What's driving that? Well, there's a couple of things driving it. One's great positioning within sectors that are moving, and there's a little bit of a currency effect involved. But irrespective of what's driving it, 6% uh, is what people usually ask for within a year's return. It just happens that it's come in within six weeks. A part of the reason, too, is the beginning of the, this financial year started in a bottom, in a low, you know, in a, an accumulation phase, nearly exactly for US markets. So there was a, this quick rally that we've experienced in the past six weeks is uh, you know the money that uh, wasn't in last year's return, but uh, it is what it is. Okay, so if you are not committed to the market, once again, I believe you're making a massive mistake because this market is very near to breaking into a new high. I do not believe that that's what it's about to do in the next day or so, but generally speaking, this is driven, it's driving, to almost new highs in the next month or so we're coming into august september we will reach a new high possibly within the next few weeks the only there is no negatives that i can tell you that are on screen now of course i can make up stories about seasonal cycles and uh, tops that occur in uh, september and october but it simply has not occurred yet and there has been no breaks of trend there's been no breaks of swing low and there's no volume information or internal advancing declining information that, that can tell me or give me any sort of clue that this market is doing anything other than continuing to the upside. So looking at this particular market, just in a really tighter time frame, I'm talking what's probably going to happen in the next week. Uh, it is and has just broken its trend line. Sorry, it's broken below its moving average and uh, the market's fallen for four days. Last time it did this, it rejected the moving average and, and bounced. This time, though, when I look at the picture, which is uh, supporting the downward move, it's, it is fairly negative, and 50% um, or more of the institutional buying volume that existed last week has evaporated. Therefore, if you were to ask me what's probably going to happen in the next week or so, the market should do what it normally does and go up. When I say go up, I'm meaning having a dog leg. I've drawn it on the screen. Markets never go straight down uh, to their trend line. They always break. They break their moving average. They have a rally and then they fall. So um, let me draw the trend line that we've been using. Just give me one moment. It's a very bad starting point. I would not be surprised to see the market come back to that trend line which I've drawn, um, drawn before, which should occur within the next week. After that, then we have the beginning of the next rally, which will probably take us into new highs. The new highs of February are a trigger. There is a body of, of investors that only invest when markets break into new highs. It will attract a lot of new money and the market should have a decent push above the, you know, in the new high area. Um, as, as I've observed many times in the past. What could derail this market? Well, I haven't got anything for you to derail the market. There is no global geopolitical or economic fa factor 
that can derail what is a strong US market driven by the aggressive policies of the Trump administration in the context of their so-called trade wars, which they're going to win. And I believe that the US is in a period of strong growth. We already know they are. They are we already know their unemployment is at historical low levels. Their, um, their economy, which is generally a consumer-driven economy, is just showing some massive signs of strength. And I cannot see in the foreseeable future what will derail that. Of course, all good things come to an end. And all good things come to an end when the market gets overstretched, inflation kicks in, and uh, the cost of capital is choked off due to rising interest rates, which is one of the levers that the US Federal Reserve, monetary and fiscal policy, the monetary policy lever of, uh, of uh, interest rates, which they do use, but that comes toward the end of a bull market. And that is not in the near horizon. It could be two, three, four, maybe even five years out. That's probably a bit far out, but it's not in the near horizon within a one year time frame. The only negative that I may be able to consider would be a seasonal cycle. But again, there's no evidence of any seasonal cycle at this point in time. And um, I find it fairly irrelevant because if you position correctly, even in pullbacks, you have produced a portfolio, which is a natural hedge in itself. If you've positioned yourself in the strongest sectors of financial markets, we're discussing these every week. We'll identify them again tonight. So uh, it all is looking very strong on the basis of the S&P 500. In the short term, just coming back to the short term, I did notice a spike in the VIX in the past few days. But that's just reflecting what is the market setting up for a pullback. If your screen is black, so is mine. I've got a pretty slow upload. One day I'm going to get an NBM. Here it is. It's about to pop up on your screen. Okay, so within the fix, I do observe a, uh, a spike and a break of short-term trend since we spoke last week. Uh, that's, not un that's nothing uh, unusual. It simply is the reflection of put purchasing as the market pulls back. To get concerned about US financial markets, you'd have to see a break of trend. All those elements that we've discussed many, many times over the past years would have to kick in for me to get excited about going to cash or hedging my portfolio. It just simply, none of that just simply exists at the moment. Coming across to other elements of the market, primarily the, uh, let's just quickly look at IWM. IWM is the mid cap and we know that it's a little bit more sensitive. We know it's been in a triangle because we drew it last week. And that triangle most probably will be broken to the downside. Maybe not this evening, because I'm not expecting the market to continue on down. Market should rally in its dog leg basis, S&P 500, and then break down into that trend line. That would be very nice. That would be a buying point on screen and uh, an opportunity if you're not exposed to the current US market. In the past few weeks, I've been slightly adjusting my portfolio to reflect strength and take away from weakness. The takeaway from weakness has been metals and mining. We'll discuss that. The, uh, the uh, exposed to strength has been in consumer staples, of which we have discussed now. I first started discussing consumer staples US in the 5th of July. I've marked it up on, I've got it all on my pad so I can go back. I've been talking about the weakness in metals and mining since the 1st of August. And, uh, and we are all well aware about the strength of tech and uh, consumer discretionary. We'll have a look at this all in a moment. So it's all about positioning. And the positioning is what's driving really strong returns. EWA. No, sorry. I don't want to do EWA. I want to go look at EWG, which is the German market. Then we'll look at the China, sorry, the German, then the Chinese market. And then we'll go have a look at our local market. First of all, EWG. I had the expectation that this particular chart, when it pops up on your screen, would start to reflect an inverted head and shoulders. That has not occurred, and the market did not go up and complete what should have been a you know, large and strong rally, uh, which would complete it, you know, that, which you could start to say, okay, that's, that's, a, that's a pattern. There is no pattern on the screen. There is no, um, there is no bottom to this fall at the moment. 
in the German market. And irrespective of if I look at EWG through the exchange traded fund or I look at the DAX, both look extremely weak. In fact, I've been treating this as a very broad based accumulation phase. This is the DAX when it comes up on your screen, but it is about to fail uh, because the pullback that's occurring at the moment is just, it's breaking down. So there is no base in the DAX. The DAX is a problem. Europe is a slight problem at the moment. I can't give you the fundamentals of why. I can just see technically it is. Uh, the fundamentals would support what I'm observing. And in the context of institutional volume behavior, it has turned, especially in the past week, um, extremely negative. So um, you wouldn't be a buyer of German equities just at this point in time. And that would be true for FXI. FXI, as we know, is the exchange traded fund relating to high cap stocks in China, based in on the New York Stock Exchange. And many weeks ago, I drew an inverted head and shoulders pattern on the screen. The reason for drawing the uh, the pattern, Alan just gave me a point. I'll bring that up, Alan. The the reason for drawing the pattern on screen was uh, the depth of the pullback in the what what could have been a W pattern. But remember, on the right-hand side of that pattern, it started pulling back below 0.618, which is a warning signal that it may fail. So I drew this pattern on, which looks like it's going to come to pass. I'll just leave that pattern there. I don't know what the bottom is, but it's capitulating. So was that a failed left show or so a failed pattern on the left? Well, it's not a failed pattern. It's simply the left-hand side of what should end up being an inverted head and shoulders pattern. For it to be an accumulation phase, for it to be a, an actual pattern, it needs to complete, it needs to be supported by volume, and that's what didn't happen on the German market. So we wait and see. Would you invest in um, in FXI? I don't think so. Would you invest in the Shanghai Composite shares? I don't think so. If I come across to Shanghai Composite, it is exactly the same pitch. I do the same W pattern on screen. It hasn't actually occurred yet but you can see what should happen. It'll fail, it'll capitulate, it will bounce. And in the next two months, we'll have an opportunity to invest, if you wanted to, in China or in Germany. These two areas of the market have actually been weak for a considerable amount of time. And um, Alan has just put up, Alan put probably due to Trump's tax on the Euro, on Euros, uh, you're talking about the trade war there, Alan. You're probably quite correct. So you've got China and the Eurozone adjusting to the negotiations by the Trump, Trump administration. Who's going to be the winner? It's obvious. Look at the screen. These two guys are the loser. These two economic regions are the loser. The US is going to be the winner. Therefore, where should you have your money? Hopefully in the US. I have. Okay, so this is a picture that has been evolving for quite a while. There's obviously more selling behavior to come. If I look at the institutional volume behavior of both FXI and EWG, in the past two weeks, it hasn't gone slightly negative. It's gone dramatically negative. I won't give you the numbers, but the pattern is clear. The selling volumes are increasing, which means market will continue down in the not too distant future. I mean, in the near future. Let's come across to our favorite market, EWA. EWA is obviously Australia basis, the exchange traded fund. And on EWA, it's had five attempts to break into new highs, but this time that didn't do it and it broke to the downside. Uh, remember that uh, this is in US dollars. So it doesn't have to conform to the same picture that you see on the Australian chart. So that's just general interest. The reason I do track that is volume behavior. I do notice a dramatic increase in the negative selling behavior by institutions, which I believe is pretty interesting. That does not necessarily coincide though with our Australian chart. Our Australian chart is not susceptible to exchange rate fluctuations. fluctuations. And as we can see, as we've been observing, this particular chart has been in an ascending triangle for the past uh, nearly two months. And 
you've got to ask yourself, where is it going to go? If you want to lay my coin on, on what's about to happen, we're going to get a massive break to the upside. This is a ascending triangle. It's a continuation pattern, using Alan's words. It is a pattern that usually breaks. The width of the pattern dictates the strength and the continue, continuing move of this particular market. So each time, though, it breaks into an above this particular horizontal blue line at the top of the pattern, it falls back. It's done it every time. And so it's done it one, two, three, four. The fifth time was today. But this time, it actually closes at the top of the range, which could indicate soon, maybe not straight away, but soon, this market is going to break out. It's going to do it really hard. So you should be exposed to the market in your Australian shares. And when I show you the sectors within Australia, you would be mad not to. It doesn't matter how I look at Australia. I'm very, very bullish on Australia. It looks really, really good. Can it fall back into the triangle? Yes. What would be the trigger on the index? You want to see a breakout and a confirmation day. So you want to see two days of you know confirming breaks. Uh, and it may be the end of the second day. Get excited and take a position if you're an index trader. Um, Alan's just suggesting that XGO close has broken the pattern. Uh, I don't disagree, and you, you could be right, Alan. I still need one more day. If that starts to go up today, tomorrow, sorry, I think you could get excited. The only thing that's going to hold it back is the US is still in a, a bit of a pullback mode. Other little interesting elements to this market would be uh, an examination of the choppiness index. The choppiness index is in a major... Uh, extreme up locked position. Now, choppiness index just in revision is not a directional indicator. It just says, for want of better words, energy is building like a volcano. And when it's up there, it's going to break really hard. So that would be my preemption on this particular index. Unless something absolutely bizarre happens, this is going to make a move. And there's reasons why. Let me show you. The reasons why this market should break really hard, besides technical indicators, is based in an examination of the sectors. I've been saying this for uh, for months. Alan, I just I'll read out Alan's con. Alan said, "Formed a dragonfly doji. Those that follow candles." Alan, I don't subscribe to candlesticks, so I apologise. I just like looking at bars and pictures on screen. Um. I'll leave it at that. I won't make even comment. I don't want to take away from candlesticks. They're probably wonderful if you're used to reading them, but uh, I just don't do them. Okay, let's just have a look at some of the sectors within the Aussie market. And uh, you tell me, when you look at these sectors, what's going on? Healthcare has gone ballistic. There was an unbelievable opportunity in healthcare in the last two days, which I took advantage of. And someone else had pointed point it out to me. It was COH. COH, I don't even know why the gap happened. It would have been on the back of a bad report, earnings report probably. But that gap, just like Facebook two, three weeks ago, presents an opportunity. So I zoomed in there as it was on the low bar and bought a heap more stock. I've already in COH uh, and healthcare. I bet you Resmead and uh, CSL, they're probably all... These are the big companies that are driving at CSL. Look at that. That's just amazing. And guess what's there? Look at this. Let's just show you something out of interest. What have we been looking at for, you know, days, weeks, and months? We've been looking at triangles, continuation patterns. Uh, if I put up volume on that screen, it should be supported by really strong volume. I haven't got that. That's the only representation I've got for Australia in terms of volume. On balance volume, kicking to the upside. Even when that market was in the triangle, volume was going to the upside, telling you that someone was buying it. It was an accumulation phase. What comes out of these long-term sideways accumulation phases? Explosive moves to the upside. So don't be surprised in the next two weeks that you're looking at the Australian market and going, Jesus, that's what we talked about only a few weeks ago, and look at the break. So that's what should happen. In on the overall market, and uh, and you should be ready for it and get ready to make a move. Coming back to the sectors within the Australian market, uh, doesn't matter what I look at: healthcare, information technology, breaking into new highs, consumer discretionary, 
Hopefully I'm not going too fast for the upload. Consumer discretionary. I'll slow down a bit. Breaking into new highs. Energies. I'm not I'm not bullish on energies, by the way. Not overseas at least. It's 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 got there's some headwinds on energies. I'll show you in a moment. And I'm going to shift that down a little bit. Consumer staples within Australia. Break into new highs. Guys, this is this is all a break from this big, big sidewards patterns. Once again, we should see an extreme move in all sectors within Australia. Choppiness index is lock limit up for most of these sectors and is now starting to go down as the market breaks the upside. XPJ, REITs, steady to the upside. XNJ, industrials, I'll slow down a bit, breaking into new highs. I'll just go XXJ, which is minus uh, real estate investment trusts. A beautiful inverted head and shoulders pattern, which been tracking now for days, weeks and months. Irrespective of the negativity, it's already been factored into the market. Ignore the Royal Commission. They can't say anything worse than what we already know. They're a bunch of shysters and, you know, they'll get sorted out, hopefully, by government and regulation by ASIC. Forget all that nonsense. Get into the market. This is a huge, huge accumulation pattern, which is now about to pick up steam as it breaks the upside. You know, I engaged in that weeks ago. What other interesting things? There was something on the news about Telstra today. I, I just can't be bothered with telecoms, but even telecoms look like they're about to break trend. Uh, utilities. I, it's not another area of the market I don't really get stuck into, but utilities is, as the picture pops up, have a bit of patience, it's coming. It is uh, nothing wonderful but it looks like it's starting to get a little bit of momentum to the upside. What's the dark area of our market? This, XMM. Metals and mining broke out of its triangle to the downside. This is not something that is not and could not have been anticipated. Uh, I have been talking about the weakness. I was expecting XME to actually get some strength, but... As soon as it started to threaten the bottom of that uh, trend line, I'm out of all my, I am, am in no metals and mining at the moment. Uh, it's not surprising. Metals and mining globally are generally um, there, especially internationally, all commodities are in US dollars. And as we know, there's been a strongly rising US dollar, which means all the contracts written in US dollars, well, commodities are getting more and more expensive. Hence, the general commodities fall off. Uh, I thought this might have been supported because it's been should have been offset by a strongly declining Australian dollar, but it hasn't. Well, I'm not going to hang around because there's money to be made, and it's in healthcare, finance, all these other sectors. Why would I wait for this to fall, which now it's going to have to? In fact, watch this. Even if you look at it like this, put in a W pattern on screen. Oh, sorry. I'm speaking in opposites. It's opposite though. Put in an M top on screen. You know that's a distribution phase. You know this is going to take days, weeks, and months before it falls, puts in an accumulation phase. Uh, you know, the moving average flattens and starts pointing up. How many weeks or months is that going to take? So why would you sit, even though long term you might be bullish in metals mine, why would you sit in there when healthcare is taking off, when finance is bottoming? when consumer staples and all the rest of them are making a big move. The only negative with metals and mining, it is such a big and dominant feature of our local market. It's the only negative that I've got at the moment. I, I, what I would like to see is this capitulate and bounce, and that bounce would support the market, and I mean the index, to break out. So this is the only negative I can see within Australia. Coming back to the index chart, I don't think I'll draw where we are. Oh, this is just another picture of it. We drew this months ago. Big cup and saucer patterns. And where is this market going to go? Let it break. We've done projections before. It should maybe even break tomorrow. Maybe not. Let it break. It probably won't. It always fools people. People get sucked in too quickly. I would let it go. Let it confirm. If you're an index trader, and uh, just be patient. 
If you're an equities investor, I know I'm repeating myself, you should be already there. Okay, just coming back, there's a few points I missed in connection to the US markets. I'm just coming back to advancing and declining figures that I track and new highs and new lows. I'm trying to pick up anything that could be a warning signal. And there isn't a warning signal because in the last three weeks, Advancing stocks were 243 to 240 declining. This is S&P 500. 266 last week advancing, 218 declining. And this week there has been a modest decline, 254 advancing, 230 uh, declining. Nothing unusual. We're in a counter trend, so there's nothing there. In terms of the volume of advancing and declining stocks, I do see a um, something a little bit interesting, but the uh, the volume of advancing stocks against the volume of declining stocks is even. Last week it was thirty one percent different, and uh, that which is pretty extreme. But that was at the top of the extension. This week it's one percent above. Again, nothing to get excited about. It's normal behaviour in a market that's having a pullback. And. Well, I've got Facebook on screen, I think two weeks ago, uh, you know, I presented an opportunity and uh, maybe it'll do a retest. I don't really matter, care at all. Uh, I bought it very close to the bottom and um, I'm happy to hold Facebook. Again, any negative news about Facebook and the changing of their, you know, of their priorities and the way they deal with information, it's already in the market. There's nothing additionally negative. So why would you not buy uh, what is an opportunity? And uh, we'll see how that pans out. Okay, just give me one moment. I'm just checking my notes. Just still checking. I'm just making sure I haven't missed anything. Okay, I'm good. Let's go across to commodities, some of the commodities and the currencies. And uh, my favorite is the currency markets because I've got a US exposure to US dollars and obviously you know I'm happy in the morning when I see the Aussie dollar fall. I have no intention of going overseas till next year so we'll see. FXA, let's do FXA representation of the Australian dollar looking at it on a weekly chart as we do on a, on a weekly basis and we are all aware that the market has broken out of this grinding upward uh, slow momentum channel and probably will continue to do so. So we that's that's what we know. What we don't know is how far is this market going to fall? My view is probably quite a bit further because the Australian dollar is quite heavily linked to the commodities market, sorry, to the to the uh, to the to the metals and mining industry. And I'm going to show you metals and mining in a moment. It doesn't look too good in the short term. So this is a weekly chart of the Australian dollar. Coming across to a daily chart, uh, we can see that uh, she's had a huge capitulation last week. I'm just going to blow this up because I took off my drawings from last week. Last week, what I drew was a little triangle on screen. And I said to you, if I turn back my page to one day, I'll go back two weeks. Okay, back on the 1st of August, in my notes, I'm saying about to fail both pattern and volume. Last week, what I said with the Australian dollar was down after a counter trend is complete. Well, the counter trend is obviously complete because complete, it's fallen. And what we can observe looking at the Australian dollar is that the uh, ranges of the last two falls could be used as a methodology for estimating, approximating, you know, roughly where is it going to get in the context of this fall. So I can do that really quickly by doing a Fibonacci extension. And the answer would be approximately 71. So when we get to 71, I'll leave this here on the screen. When we get to 71, that range would equate to previous right ranges. And it's at that point that we'd look for a shift in pattern and volume behavior to indicate a lows coming in. Once again, is there any indication that it's going to stop there? I don't think so. Because 
when we look at the US dollar, this is the one traded on the Australian uh, market. Uh, last week, we were talking about the market touching this trend line. It's going to go back and look at my comments. I just got the word up in last week's comments. And the week before that, I wrote on my pad, maintaining trend, steady volume. So last week, when this market was touching that trend line, uh, I would have indicated that it is unlikely to break trend due to positive institutional volume behavior supporting the market at this level. And that's exactly was right because it bounced. So now we've got an extension to the upside and we could do uh, extension measurements with Fibonacci ratios if you wished based on previous ranges to the upside. We could just eyeball it if you like. So there's plenty of more room for this to go, which means an ongoing falling currencies currency pairs, Australian dollar keep, should keep on falling and commodities generally should keep on falling, uh, which would include um, you know, all commodities. But the commodity that we look at most of all, well, the two commodities that we track most of all are, this, are the, um, the uh, gold market and also the uh, oil market. So if the US dollar is going up strongly, all currencies against it should be going down. We know gold is a commodity, but it's also a currency. It's a storage of wealth. And we also know that in the long, longer picture, I'm pulling the longer picture up because we've got new people in the room this evening. In the longer term picture, it's been grinding its way upward and we observed and we analyzed the breakdown many, many weeks ago. In terms of the breakdown, just going back on my notes two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I wrote on my notes, I just put the word down. The reason I wrote down is the increasing in negative institutional volume behavior. Last week, I put down. And I also just noted the increase in negative volume behavior. And this week, again, I go down at an increasing rate. The volume, the institutional volume behavior has got greater in terms of its selling. It's a higher number, which means this is nowhere near finished and found its low. This is actually a pretty major fall on gold. It's going to take it back to a monthly chart. Yeah, it's really, really good. Obviously, you know, not, not to be in, don't, not, it's not an investment area. If the only thing you could have done with this would be trade it to the downside, but um, uh, no opportunity there for investment just at this point in time. Okay, just coming back to a daily chart. So gold is strongly down, um, and uh, basically that's been a true statement for many, many, many weeks. Coming over to XME. I just want to look at XME because I made a statement that I'm out of all my XME stocks. Why? First of all, let's have a look at XME, which is the metals and mining index in the United States. And what we'll notice and what we did, I would have pointed out last week, is that XME has uh, broken trend. In fact, I mentioned that on August 1st, and the first sign of it was uh, the shift in volume behavior on the 1st of August, which was basically here. And that coincided with a break of trend. So there was no positive volume supporting a bounce off that trend line. It's the reverse of the US dollar. It was negative selling volume coinciding with a break of trend, which preempted a breakdown in this market. I ask you, and you can answer the question, why would you hang around in XME stocks if it's broken trend, the trend is going to take days, weeks, and months to repair as it goes through accumulation, stabilization, and upward move. There are so many other things you could do. So if you're hanging on to your um, to your metals and mining stocks, I don't think it's a great idea. Doesn't matter whether I look at XME or whether I look at XMM, which is the Australian index. I've already put up the Australian index. It isn't as dramatic, but it has broken. And that was my cutoff point. I was very happy to see and stick with metals and mining in Australia is as long as it didn't break down out of that triangle. But it has, hence my trigger to get out and convert and shift money into areas of strength rather than areas of weakness. What we do need to do is just to have a look at the story of uh, sector strength against what I've said within the sectors, first of all, within the Australian market. Just give me one moment. 
going to bring up a rotation chart. Okay, let me start with this chart. It is the Australian chart. Anything on the right of the chart is really strong. Anything on the left on the chart is has been weak and could be growing. The obvious strength in this particular chart is XHJ. You can relate XHJ with what I just showed you on the sector chart with this massive breakout. Please don't interpret downward movements on this chart as weakness. It's absolutely incorrect interpretation. This is a really strong sector of the market. Uh, what is really weak is anything gravitating or toward the left, the blue line XMM. Another reason why I was hoping for it to stay within the triangle, which would have meant that it did a right rotation on the screen. It didn't eventuate, eventuate and I exited the trade. Everything else on this screen is strong, including telecoms, which are screaming, I'm presenting an opportunity. That is probably definitely the low. XL, XFJ, XUJ, XNJ, everything, XXJ, everything on this screen is saying there's a potential. There is one caveat there. I didn't look at the oil market. I really do need to look at oil and we'll have a look at it shortly. I believe oil is about to fail. I'll show you why in a moment. It already has broken, but there's a couple of reasons. In fact, why don't I show you right now before I forget? It's the one commodity I missed. If I come across to oil, the two representations of oil I've got on screen are um, USO, Texas Light Crude, and XLE, which is the energy complex. Just give me one moment. Okay, I've got it. Let's do USO first of all. It's a black screen. It's taking a little bit of time to upload. It's coming. Patience, it'll be there soon. Okay, this is USO. USO has been in this nice uptrend for many, many, many months since, uh, you know, this time last year, July, August last year. As of last night, it just put a red bar, which is underneath its longer term trend line. That red bar is backed by a massive amount of institutional selling volume. Again, this is the story that I've given a number of times uh, with the US dollar. This is the opposite of going to the US dollar. This is going to break. It should break. I, I can't see into the future, but it should break because there's no buying support at this line. Therefore, if you are exposed to oil or oil-based stocks, that would be a mistake because the probability of fire is very high. Not guaranteed, but probability is very high. If I measure XL uh, USO, Texas Light Crude, against its broader measurement of the energy complex, which is XLE, uh, we can also note uh, an important element of pattern behavior, which is a declining triangle, which didn't break up. I would have preempted that to break up, or even drew the line that it was going to break up. I can't see into the future. Look what's happened. This particular break to the downside is supported by a massive increase in negative selling behavior. So this is not going to bounce tonight. This is going to continue on down and it's going to go wherever it goes. So the trigger to not be in and exposed to XLE, irrespective of sector rotation charts, is your view of the volume behavior and the pattern behavior behind this chart. So I am in no way exposed to energy and in no way exposed to commodities, metals and mining, just at this point in time. Just give me one moment, guys. I'm just checking. Okay, so coming back now to the sector rotation charts. It's not clear that energies are about to fail on this particular chart as it pops up, but this is me preempting what's about to happen and getting out of the way of danger and moving into what is sure strength. Coming across to the US rotation chart, if you look at the XLE and USO, XLE has been losing momentum 
and is now at a point where you should start to see its strength uh, ebb away very quickly if I am right. So what I'm saying is a tiny little preemptive. XME is a dog, GLD is a dog. Where is the strength? The new strength on this chart, I've pointed it out many times. It is in XLV, healthcare, XLU, which uh, Alan pointed out last week, so I always skip over it, and XLP. I've been talking about XLP for a long time now. I'm exposed to XLP. I'm taking advantage of this market move. The other two areas of the market, which is really strong, is consumer discretionary and tech. Um, so there's uh, many, not many, not as many sectors driving US markets. It's staples, utilities, healthcare, discretionary, tech, and that's where I'm going to, oh, finance is evolving. Finance isn't moving yet, but it's about to make a move. How can I tell that? It's starting to move up as soon as it does two data points to the right. It'll be going. Let's go have a look at XLP. I was talking about XLP back in July 5th. Why do I know that? Because I've tabbed back in my, my, my book. I've got this A4 diary in front of me where I keep pretty detailed notes of what I say in these rooms, in this room, in case anyone questions what I have said in the past. Let's just go quickly. Go have a look at XLP. I said to you back then that it's very difficult to imagine what's about to happen in the future when you're looking at a sector that has been weak and everything looks like it's in decline. They, they, I know they were my words because there's nothing else I would ever say because I say it all the same thing all the time ad nauseum for decades now. So let's go down to my list. My list, here it is here. So, and I put the top two stocks. I think they were COST, which I own, and uh, SVYY. Let me click the first one. Costco, and these are these are not filtered. They're in no special order. Um, you know, they're just stocks that uh, I picked to get you going. You know, to get you to start doing some due diligence in the uh, in this area. This particular stock had a huge uh, fall, which was an opportunity to add. Uh, just a couple. I'll just do a couple more. Uh, PG uh, going up nicely. This is the sort of chart that you were faced with back in. Remember, this was back in, just checking the date again, 5th of July. So back in July, this had just been coming off this huge fall and it was just starting to break trend. It's hard to get your brain around. It's the beginning of a potentially a major trend, but I believe that's what we're in. If you go back to even, this is Coca-Cola, back to the 1st of July when I'm talking about it had just come off its low. It was barely breaking trend. But in the last few weeks, it's gone from 43 to $46. It's um, looking really good. So uh, PEP, I won't go any further. I think you get the message. That was an opportunity. It still is an opportunity. And you just need to take advantage of it if you wish to. The other opportunity I've been really weighting my portfolio towards is the healthcare sector within the United States. If I go to a sector chart of healthcare, just give me one moment. It is an impressive chart. One moment. We talked about this last week, and Alan identified the, um, the particular segment of healthcare, which is biotech. And my exposure to healthcare in the United States is all biotech now. So this is getting really close. It looks so strong. I'll just go check the stocks that I own within healthcare. Hopefully, they're all going well. So I own GTHX since April, BGNE, not that spectacular. I might have to go have a look at this one, BPTCT, not unhappy with that chart, and ILMN, I'm not unhappy with this chart. So this is all good. And uh, and I think there's a lot more to come after we have this little pullback within the markets. Just give me one moment. I'm just reading my notes. I'm making sure I haven't missed anything. And I'm losing my voice. The only thing I didn't cover this evening, and I've got the word C-R-A-P against robo stocks. I'll go there and have a look. There's a reason I put that word there because I've lost complete. Well, there's nothing there. 
I'm not about falling in love because I think tech's going to take over the world. You know, artificial uh, intelligence is going to take over the world. That's not what I'm about. I'm about identifying strength. And at a point in time, robo was hot. Hive, H-I-V-E was hot. Uh, B-O-T-Z, they were hot. But now they're not. So I'm not interested. Why would I stick in these stocks? They were the 2017 story. 2018 has not been the time for these shares to make any move. Um, so why would I stick in them? So that's why you don't hear me mention them uh, a great deal. Along with, I don't want to pick on Bitcoin, but Bitcoin, I read an article today, it's getting critical. And I, I'm not sure what designates the unviability of a cryptocurrency, um, but they were talking about its unviability. Mike, maybe you could answer. That I don't know what what that means, but I don't want to really get onto it. I'm just pointing out that this looks like it's about to break again. So, um, you know, it is uh, not looking too good, guys. I think I've covered everything. I'm just checking my pad. I've done the indices, all the commodities, currencies. I believe we've got a really good uh, view. Just in summary, now is not the time to go long if you're trading. Why am I saying that? Because I'm expecting the market to pull back. Last time, I, I, I track a few people. They started trading the low back in um, early July. They made a squillion. They made a lot of money just on that leg from not even, they didn't even trade the whole leg. It is not for sure whether this market's going to pull back, but by all accounts, it does appear that it is. And if it does pull back to that trend line, there goes your trigger to start trading to the long side. In the respect of portfolio management and construction, you get in any time. It doesn't matter. Because if you're listening and following what I'm saying, even if you got in a stock tonight and the market pulled back, uh, you'll find your shares will go up. Do you want some evidence of that? Yeah, I'll show you. I actually bought consumer um, staples last night. I'll show you something pretty interesting. The reason I bought consumer staples, because I'm buying really strong shares and the market fell over last night, but consumer staples was the sector that is, has gone up. It's bouncing off its trend line. So, you know, the purchase of shares for investment is just simply not as critical as, um, you know, as buying shares for, or, you know, if you're a trader. So in the next week, if you've got money to spare, add to your portfolio and expose yourself to what I've just shown you. Guys, I believe that's it for this evening. I appreciate your attending, and uh, especially guys like uh, Alan Hain from New Zealand, who has to trudge through the snow and uh, listen to this. So thanks, guys, and I look forward to seeing you same time next week. Thank you. Good night.